Cat1 here, back with some more Corpse Party. Um, last time... Well, things didn't go so well. We got the bad end, and I'm gonna do another recording session now. Cut to what we missed. Okay, so apparently I was supposed to go in the room with the... Uh, newspaper that said, do not read, and read it. Why would I do that? Door is locked. Yep, here's where I was. This is exactly where I was. Oh, I got a bad feeling about this room. Oh, man. Huh. I've turned the volume down this time. Might turn it up a little bit, actually, because it's kind of quiet right now. But I've turned it down so you can hear me better. Because the music's great and all, but it's like blasting. Okay. Booty. Then we approach the skeleton, and we notice that it says that there's a message, don't look at the newspaper. But we're going to look at the newspaper. Serial kidnapping and murder, the good name of Heavenly Host Elementary School has been stained in blood today as horrific details on the recent wave of disappearances are revealed. Over the past months, numerous children have gone missing within the town, and authorities quickly returned to kidnapping as the most likely explanation. Now investigators have located the whereabouts of these children, and their findings are far worse than anyone could have anticipated. The bodies of the absconded youths were discovered within the Heavenly Host Elementary School building on September 18, 1973, at around 7 p.m. Authorities further revealed that a male instructor from the school was found with them alive. Alive but near catatonic, holding a pair of bloodied scissors. Each of the corpses appeared to have its tongue severed and removed. Something mutilations far too, probably grotesque, to describe. The page is torn at this point, and the bottom half of the article is nowhere to be found. How awful. I think I heard about this, though, once before. Not me, but I guess it did happen long before we were born, so I shouldn't be too surprised. And there goes the door. <sighs> oh no, it's locked. It seems fixed to the wall like a decoration. It won't open. Won't open. Well, now what? Heavenly Post. You will never leave this room. Well, that's great. There's a candle here, but it's unlit. Uh. The door seems fixed to the wall like a decoration. It won't open. Well, what do we do? You will never leave this room. There's no way out. Oh, what do we do? This is your fault. Oh, wow. I guess that perfectly. This is your fault, you know. What? How? You're the one who told us to go in the room. Of course, we have to anyway, apparently. So, yep. And there's our way out. Let's go. Oh, man, that scared the crap out of me. <sighs> Hold up. Oh, no. No, it's gone. What is? The paper doll scrap I got from Mayumi. Oh, the charm? Mine's still in my student ID holder. Crap, I put mine in my pocket. It must have fallen out somewhere. That's why I keep telling you, you gotta put things away before they get lost. Now I'm sad. I'm gonna turn the volume up a little bit. There, that's perfect. What's this? No running in the halls. Oh yeah. Can't really go this way, can I?
Oh, that's where I came from. Now I think I'm supposed to go to the infirmary. Let me check. So in checking the first part of the walkthrough, I found that I've actually managed to get every single bad end possible. <clears throat> Which is why I've been checking the walkthrough. It's spoiler free though, so don't worry. What do you mean I could save here all along? First time, alright. Goodbye, infirmary scene. Alright, so here's where things went downhill. And this is supposed to change, if I got it right. I'm going to kill you. No, you're not. Yeah, I don't remember this. Oh, gross. That's gross. Patter, patter. Naomi, what happened? Are you okay? Seiko. Sorry for the mess. What are you talking about? Don't apologize for barfing, you poor girl. Belch. Everything's okay. You'll feel better now that the, it's out of your system. You need me to rub your back? Ugh, I think I'll be fine. Thanks, though. Did you find Yuka? Uh-uh. Looks like we really are the only two people here. The only two living people, anyway. This place is just way too quiet. Hmm. How about you, Naomi? Is your leg any better? Are you okay to be up and about? While I was resting, I was suddenly attacked by this creepy black apparition thing. What? Oh my god, are you alright? I think so. We should consider that room off-limits from here on out, though. That's fine. I'm just glad you're okay. I guess we'd better keep moving, then. Can you stand? Yeah. But where are we supposed to go? Hmm, well... We've already been pretty much everywhere we can go in this godforsaken school. And the only other people we've come across are all dead. Hmm. Dang it, there I go again. It's hopeless. We're finished. And I'm so tired. I'm acting like a child again. Then Naomi, come on. It's not that bad. We'll figure something out. Class 2 Niners never say die, right? We're invincible. I've got a hairdresser's appointment first thing in the morning tomorrow, and I intend to keep it. And then in the afternoon, what say you and I go get our bikes fixed? Sounds like a plan, right? If we make it back alive, sure. This is Seiko. What am I doing? I just can't seem to hold back. N Naomi, are you, like, super duper tired or something? This is so not like you. Come on, raise that chin. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And also those ghosts everywhere. The hex got you so chipper. Uh, hmm? You just keep smiling and laughing? D do I? Tell me, how long is that going to last if it turns out we can never go home again? Mm -mm. Have you given that any thought at all? We'll figure something out. That's a crock, and you know it. Never heard that term before. I must have finally cracked under the pressure. This whole situation was just more than my soul could bear. I thought I'd be keeping Seiko's spirits up till the bitter end. But just like that, I was berating her, abusing her. All I had running through my head was pain and sadness. I was like a baby throwing a hissy fit. I was crying out, irrationally, and couldn't stop. Venomous words were flowing from my mouth as if someone had turned on a spigot. All I could do was moan, complain, and belittle. I really was behaving just like a spoiled little brat. I'm sure our families are going to be really worried about us. They're going to search and search, but they'll never find us. 
It'll be a terrible burden for them. You're wrong. How so? About it being a burden. When you lose a loved one, you cherish that person's memory. It's never a burden. You just want to do whatever you can. Whatever you can to make her proud. You want to, so you do. What is wrong with me? Seiko's mom disappeared several years ago. I know that, so why am I putting her through all this grief? That's how I think the people we leave behind are going to feel. I don't know how it is for you and your family. But normal people don't work that way. Naomi. Sorry. How about we split up? We can cover more ground that way. Maybe find a clue to help us get out of here. That's a bad idea. Didn't you hear what the ghost said? Stay together and everything will be okay, at least until you die. Seems the most efficient plan of attack, don't you think? Who? Who says things like that? I have to apologize. I want to get home just as much as you do. Back to my dad and you and everybody else. And I sure as heck don't want to make them worry about me. This is all my fault. I have to apologize. But most of all, I don't want you, all people, to speak to me like that. Of course I'm going to apologize. Why wouldn't I apologize? Seiko, I'm... I'm... So... I... I'm sorry too, but it's okay. If that's what you think we should do, then let's split up. I'll go this way. The heck is wrong with me? I couldn't even manage to say the word sorry. Is this the end of the chapter? And so, in this nexus of closed spaces where humans are scattered and imprisoned and killed, two friends who should have been thankful just for the small favor of being trapped together in this unforgiving place were quickly and easily divided. My petty obstinacy towards Psycho would come to be the biggest regret of my life as the consequences of that heated exchange were far more dire than I could ever have imagined. Sob, wail, Naomi, that jerk. I think I just heard somebody calling out. Follow the voice? I think I'm supposed to follow the voice. Mm. Mm. That was the first time, huh? The first time I ever fought with Naomi like that. Pant, pant. From the moment Seiko and I parted ways, the fear I'd been harboring since I just got since I got here just kept growing stronger and stronger. Why would you split up? That'd be scary. Like why would you wander this ghost school all alone when you could have a friend? But nope, you got to split up. Good job, Naomi. I felt like something else was in my head, like I was under some alien influence. In my mentally distraught state, I ran all through the building, frantically searching for Seiko. I just kept calling her name over and over again. When I finally came back to my senses, I found myself standing in the third floor hallway. Wait, didn't this happen before? Seiko, Seiko, where are you? Come on, Seiko, don't leave me by myself in here. This has happened before. I definitely remember this happening before. Seiko, is that you? Aw, oh, come on, you can't be telling me I'm going to get the bad end again. Yeah, she did. Seiko, no! Is this all going to happen over again?
Can't be happening over again. Can't get the bad end again. Seiko, no! Why? Why? No, no. Gotta get the bucket again. Maybe if I get it faster this time, I can save her. Oh, gross. Okay. Nah, she dead. Yeah, she dead. Please don't give me the bad ending this time. No, 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 stop, why, why would you do it? We've seen all of this before. Wow, oh, uh, Seiko. Are the ghost children not gonna appear this time? I want to apologize to you for what I said. Up until just a few hours ago, I was laughing and playing in school with my best friend. Now, here she was, in front of my eyes, lifeless hanging from a noose. How could I possibly accept that as a reality? I can't believe this is real. I refuse to accept it. It just can't be. Continued in Chapter 2.